In this video, I'm going to talk about the number one thing that turns women on, that they are attracted to, in some cases more than anything else, but that very few women would admit they want. Because if you ask girls, oh, what, what do you want in a man? I want a guy who's nice. I want a guy who has a good job. I want a guy who's respectful. And yet they end up sleeping with degenerate drug dealers, even though they're classy looking hot girls. You'll see that again and again. And the reason is because the vast majority of men are afraid of this trait, are afraid of the one trait that is the most seductive to women if you use it right. Because there's actually a very good reason why girls are kind of worried about admitting they like this, that they want this. Because if you use it wrong, it's very unattractive, it's very unappealing, it's very pushy, it's awful. And women have a lot of bad experiences with men who do this the wrong way. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what this trait is, how to use it correctly, and how to avoid using it in a way that turns women off. So, if you wanna understand female psychology and what turns them on, the best place to go is what they consume for arousal, right? And women, you know, they'll watch porn, but far less than men. However, there's something women do far more than men, and that is read smut novels. That is read romance novels, which is it's very sexual, it's meant to be arousing. That's the whole point of reading it, yet there's nothing visual about it. That's one of the differences between men and women is they're far more imaginative and story-based when it comes to sex and arousal and seduction. And so, if you look into the most popular romance novel of all time, Fifty Shades of Grey, there are a few themes. Yes, the guy is good looking, Yes, the guy is rich, and those are common, although often in romance novels it'll be like a pirate or a werewolf or a vampire who's not rich and who's, you know, literally a monster. So it's not always about those two things. But the main thing that the character, and keep in mind, this is the number one book in the 2010s in terms of sales of any book, perhaps even above the Bible. I'm would have to check that. But it's the number one best-selling book. And what is the main theme? BDSM, dominance and submission to the most extreme degree. And this is a scenario where the man definitely makes the first move if you read the book, which I recommend you do not because it's a good book, because it'll help you understand female psychology. The man is the one who pursues her. The man is the one who's really attracted to her and just he can't stop thinking about her and he creates a scenario where he's able to see her again and again and again it's kind of stalkery if she didn't like him but he's the one who's making the first move he's the one who's dominant right from the beginning and she's able to be fully submissive that is what creates sexual tension it's polarity it's opposites you know if you pay attention you'll notice that even among gay couples and lesbian couples it's very common for there to be one person who's masculine, who's dominant, and one who's submissive, right? There'll be, maybe I'll get canceled for saying this, but there'll be a lipstick lesbian and a butch lesbian. One who's very feminine, one who's submissive, one who lets the other person take the first move, and then one who's dominant, who takes charge. It doesn't have to be the man, but the vast majority of women are not going to take on that role. Because why would they? They know that if a man likes her, He's supposed to make the first move. He's supposed to be dominant. And why risk getting rejected when you don't have to? So dominance is what women fantasize about. But here's where men kind of get it twisted, where they kind of misunderstand, is they think it means unhealthy entitlement. And by unhealthy entitlement, I, means, I mean that whenever a girl is, you know, not being receptive or she's pulling back and she doesn't seem interested, they think, well... She's just playing hard to get. Well, I should be more dominant. I should be more pushy. I know she likes me. She's just playing this game. And that is why that women have learned to not admit, to not want to accept that they want dominance because there's so many guys out there that do it in a very unhealthy way, in a way that is not calibrated, that is not paying attention to the feedback, the social cues that you're getting. So dominance is the number one thing that turns women on, but only 
until they don't want it, until they start giving you any sign that they're pulling away, they get tense, they're uncomfortable. And then what turns women on is reciprocation, is paying attention and pulling away yourself and showing empathy and showing respect. Because one of the biggest things, and I know that might sound blue-pilled or whatever, but you should be dominant, you should make the first move, you should have piercing eye contact, you should make the girl feel that you want to fuck her. She should feel that by the way that you act, the way that you behave, and that you are going to initiate that. You are going to make that happen. That should be emanating from everything in the way you carry yourself until you notice any sign of discomfort, and that's when you show empathy. Because it's hard to understand as a man, but try to imagine if every woman was six foot six on average, they weighed 330 pounds on average, and were two and a half times as physically strong as you. Well, you might think, oh man, I really like tits and she's really hot. Oh, she's coming up to me and saying hi. Oh, ha, ha, hi. Oh, she's really close to me. She could just knock me out if she wanted to. Hi, well, she's hot, but this is kind of uncomfortable. Oh, she's putting her arm around me. and uh, You're tense. Think about how overwhelming that could be. But then, if this giantess or whatever pulled back and showed respect and gave you space whenever you were uncomfortable, then that would be relatable, right? That would be what you need is a sense of safety, a sense of comfort mixed with dominance. And those two things seem contradictory, but they're really not. You don't create comfort by being beta, by being a bitch, by never making a move, by being overly polite, by being overly nice. You do it by leading with dominance, by going in strong, by making your intentions clear, by making the girl feel that you will ravish her, making her feel those things, but at the same time, being 100% willing to back off. You're the first to make a move, the first to back off. You know you have to take the responsibility for making something happen because women will very rarely do that, but you're also entirely willing to back off instantly. As soon as you get any sign of hesitance or discomfort, you calibrate, right? You pull back, you give space, and that will turn her on even more because then she knows that she can trust you, that you're not gonna be one of those guys that's too pushy, that's too aggressive, that you know starts to get needy and weird and clingy and all those things. So it basically checks all of the boxes. But most men, what they learn to do, especially after the whole Me Too and the whole, you know, just all men are toxic, toxic masculinity, all that stuff, they go too far in the other direction. The truth is there's a very good reason for those things, for women to push that narrative that dominance is bad, to be uncomfortable with it because it's a nuanced point. It's not black and white. It's dominance is attractive as long as she's receptive to it. But if she's not, you have to be able to pull away. And that's, you know, that's too much for a mainstream narrative to explain because we like it to be simple. We like it to be black and white. It's like the black pill. It's either all looks or all game. Like how dumb do you have to be to think it's all looks or it's all game? Of course it's both. The question is how much of each and how do you optimize each? But we like simple answers. We like simple truths. We like it to be easy. And the problem is that has made a society of men who are basically cocked, who basically are completely unattractive to women, who are unable to put themselves out there to make a move, who get no options. There's more involuntary celibates, men who are not getting laid than ever before. And a lot of it has to do with this fear of being dominant, of putting yourself out there, of thinking your sex drive is a turn off, not a turn on. It's a turn on, but if they're not interested, you have to be able to pull back and not just keep going because that's what's uncomfortable. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you're thinking, well, this sounds cool, but how do I actually implement this in my own life? The best way is to see examples of dominance done in a way that is calibrated, that is empathetic, in real life, to see actual interactions where this plays out, and that's exactly what you can get in my online course, God Mode. I have over five hours of hidden camera infield of myself approaching women, being dominant, taking the lead, escalating, but also calibrating, also pulling back. There's one interaction where the girl rejects me multiple times before I actually end up taking her home, and I show how to navigate that, and I can't explain all the little details 
effectively by just talking about it. You have to see it play out. You have to see what a good interaction looks like because then you'll learn on a much deeper level than just the logical layer. You're actually understanding it on an emotional level, on an instinctual level, and that is far more powerful. So if you want to take this concept to the next level, you can click the link below to get a copy of my online course God Mode, which includes over five hours of not just getting numbers, not just approaching girls, but all the way from approaching to taking them home. So click the link below to get your copy.